Who would like to see me try to start this thing? Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So I've just been um, <clears throat> taking a little time this morning to tidy up some of the wiring for the charging system because I hadn't really completed that. And if we're going to fire this thing up, we have to give it fuel. Uh, I'm not ready to put fuel in the gas tank because once I put fuel in this thing, uh, because all I can get here in California is ethanol blend, uh, I don't want to be putting fuel in this until I'm at a stage of let's say, a stage of my life where I'm ready to continually be caring for the fuel in this tank. And there, with the build going on here, there still may be some times where this bike is sitting for a couple of weeks. So I just want to make sure, uh, I want to avoid putting fuel in the tank for right now. So fuel. Fuel needs to go in here, right there. I think you can see there. There it is. That's the fuel rail inlet, and uh, I'm just going to rig up a temporary fuel supply. Another thing we have to do here with these carbs is um, the vacuum. There's a couple of lines here on number two, and another one on number four. That I'll show you what has to happen there. On uh, one of these bikes stock there were two tubes that came up from these and um, wound their way up over the top of the air cleaner box in here and they just vent the bowls for uh, you know so they have atmospheric pressure in the bowls and not a vacuum created there and so I'm just gonna stick these short sections of hose on and they simply just need to point up to a high point and uh, that should be high enough. I just want to be you know kind of to the higher part of the engine. And then one more that's a little difficult to uh, get to down by the fuel inlet. So this is I can't get my finger in there. That is where the fuel is going to go in. That guy back there is the uh, vacuum nipple for the um, fuel petcock. So without vacuum coming from the engine, the fuel petcock goes into a closed position so that fuel cannot flow. This was uh, an EPA regulation, I believe, where um, they didn't want fuel just draining out of these carbs into the environment. Uh, which you know happened back in the day and when a float would get stuck or a, a needle would get stuck and it would just flow and flow until the tank was empty and all that gas got all over the place and of course it was a fire hazard too so uh, they started putting in vacuum fuel petcocks and so here on the fuel petcock I gotta clean this thing up yet this is on but off is any time other than prime where there's no vacuum to this nipple. So if we're not going to have this in place while we are doing a test start of the bike, then we have to somehow block off that vacuum on the carb. I'm trying to get just the right angle for you to see that. And I'm just going to put this red, um, I don't know if that's in focus for you, just a red cap over that nipple while we are, that one is too loose, I need smaller. Okay, won't be red, it's gonna be blue. But we just need to temporarily plug that. Otherwise we're gonna have a vacuum leak and be running very lean in that carb potentially. So I guess worthy of note here is if you were doing a custom build where you're not using the stock fuel petcock 
or maybe not even the stock tank, and you're just using uh, a regular valve, uh, you know, an on or off valve for your fuel control on a custom build, I'm assuming here, then you would need to plug that nipple on the carbs, or again, you're going to have a lean condition on carburetor number three. The other thing I will say about ethanol fuel and old vintage bikes with carburetors like this, uh, especially bikes that you're not going to be riding very regularly and always putting fresh gas in, um, get some Stabil or some Seafoam. These guys are your friends. Always have them. Always use them if you have ethanol in your gas and it will save you big headaches. So I have made a little fuel reservoir thing out of uh, some gear oil uh, container and I put a section of hose on it. I do not, I repeat, I do not recommend you build one of these like I have done it. Um, big fire hazard. I'm gonna use it anyways, but that's me, not you. And obviously we connect this to the fuel rail between two and three carburetors. Okay, sorry, I got interrupted. A neighbor of mine was walking by and we got to chatting. So uh, what I <laughs> did off camera is decided to put a fuel filter in here because there's probably a bunch of dust that has settled or something into my uh, reservoir up there. And ultimately I want to have this there anyways. So uh, it was just easier to manipulate this and get it in there. So, there we go. Now, I can put fuel into all of the bolts. The other thing I'm going to do here is go ahead and put a rag underneath all the carbs. Uh, for me, this is the first time I'm going to be putting fuel in here. So, if I have a leak, I want to be able to control that some. And, um, you know, have the door open. Um, have a fire extinguisher ready and obviously you want it be rated so that it is actually going to extinguish a gasoline fire. Um, what else for safety? You know, don't put a whole lot of gas into that reservoir, just what you need. I grabbed my gas can and I hear that there's some old gas in here. Don't use old gas, well, if it's good gas. This is ethanol blend, so I know this has been in here for months. I'm not going to pour that into my engine that I put so much work into. So um, get some clean gas. That's where I'm off to is good fresh gas. Okay, so I've put a jumper battery onto my smallish battery, so because I'll be turning this over a bunch here. And what are the four things that we need for an engine to start? Um, air, fuel, compression, and spark. Um, spark, you could kind of say that that gets subdivided into timing. Uh, you got to have timing because it really doesn't matter if you have spark if the spark is coming at the wrong time. Um, so I haven't checked spark since doing the points set on uh, the previous video. So I pulled out uh, number three and number four. If these two are firing, then I have checked both of my coils. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that I'll have spark in one and two if three and four are firing, because this is a wasted spark system, and I'm looking at both coils and both set of, of uh, contact points if I'm looking at three and four. Um, that isn't a hundred percent guarantee that one and two are gonna fire. It's just a bit of an assumption at this point. If it fires up and it's running rough, I can dig deeper and see that uh, maybe I've got a problem with one and two. So let's take a look at our spark and um, 
going to turn this over. I don't have fuel in the in the uh, bike yet, and I just want to see if I got spark. Well, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, it's definitely there on both sides, so I am sending spark to uh, 3 and 4, which fair to assume 1 and 2 are also getting it. Button this back up. Now we need fuel. I want to tip my hat to my friend Rodney who did the cafe racer seat who mentioned, uh, showed him a picture of this fueling rig here uh, and he said don't put too much pressure on your float valves and uh, good point you know if I fill this thing up with a bunch of gasoline and then have it up as high as I did the weight of all of that gasoline is going down and pressing against those tiny tiny needle valves and uh, of course you know there isn't that much pressure when you have the tank on so I've lowered this down some it's still you know you need to have it higher than the carbs clearly and I'm also I'm not gonna fill this up I might put gasoline in here geez up to maybe the handle and that's it and right now I'm just gonna put gas in it and um, just look for leaks So far, things are staying pretty dry under here. I'm going to put more fuel in, though. I did not put very much in. Got a little drip here, trying to see where that's coming from. Right here. Any other drips? seems to have stopped and I'm just gonna see if I'm getting fuel out of the drains here yep it's dripping so I've got fuel in that bowl and can I reach in there yep I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side okay so I do have fuel now draining out of all four bowls but I've also got a leak directly under that T right there on the fuel rail and uh, it's not gushing but it's profound and I will need to address that but I don't think that's gonna stop me from starting it here I'm just gonna clean things up and change out the rag
increase the charge up to 13.5 when I revved it a little bit there so I think my charging system is working I'm gonna have to do a more in-depth um, check on that okay it runs um, strange how three years goes by and in complete silence and then one day it breathes to life so an interesting thing to note here, tomorrow is the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride for 2019. The Distinguished Gentleman's Ride of 2016 was the day that I last rode this bike and uh, had uh, it was a really hot day and I guess I had a lean condition in cylinder number four and I burned a hole in the piston. So, this bike has not run in pretty much exactly three years. And so almost to the day, three years later, uh, it's running again. So that's kind of fun. What do I have to do here now? I need to fix that fuel leak. We're gonna have to synchronize the carbs. We have to tune it, you know, make sure. I mean, it sounded like it was running pretty good, but um, we wanna get quick throttle response. We want to make sure we're not running lean at any point in the throttle range or too rich. Um, but frankly, I had error on the rich side. And uh, what else? Well, there's a lot to do yet. Oh, the license plate. Um, synchronized carbs. What I've learned already is I'm getting a little bit of gasoline onto the VHT engine paint that I put down here, so I got a lot of rag stuffed in here right now. And it does soften up that paint. The paint is supposed to be cured, you know, get hot and cure, and this is the first time since painting it, how many years ago, that it has gotten hot. So uh, I may be curing it now, but we got gasoline on it before that cure happened in some places. So I may have to do a little touch up with the VHT not too concerned there. Um, carbs got to come off. I got to fix a leak in the fuel rail. Although once it got running, it seemed to go away. But you know we can't have it just leaking all, while it's sitting. So um, lots to do. Pretty darn excited about the sound. These mufflers are muffling some, but leaving a nice deep, rich kind of low end rumble. I uh, hope the camera picked that up. And um, what else? The, check the charging system. Make sure that we are indeed uh, increasing our, our voltage at the battery as we go higher, but then stopping at a certain point and being regulated by our regulator. So uh, that was good, but the rectifier seems to be working because we, we definitely had 12.9 something volts at idle, and then when I revved it up, it went to 13.5-ish. Um, but I didn't see, you know, test the top end of that. I have to, I think, bleed this uh, oil pressure gauge and see if I can't get um, a better reading there, and because it's... You know, it's moving, but barely, and I think what I'm doing is squeezing an air pocket, possibly. Uh, we'll see. Hey, guys, it runs, and that was pretty exciting. If you like what I'm doing, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to become an urban monk. Thanks for watching.